The global warming alarm is dressed up as science, but it's not science. It's propaganda. Let's talk about climate change, because climate change well, is... Well, actually, issue let's not talk about climate change. Well, let's actually, let's talk about climate change, talk about about and that is why we are here tonight, well, let's, because let's, they're two let's, interesting, different yes, views. Let's, the debate doesn't seem to be very clear. We're getting messages that are mixed from uh, the, the uh, science uh, and technology community, so it's very, not, not very clear, really, is it? I can't believe, really, the information we're getting. I'm not quite sure about it. I was convinced that it, that, uh, it was having an effect, but now I'm not so sure. I think it's fine, kind of hard to know if we've actually been around long enough to know if there's a pattern or to kind of understand exactly what human contribution is. How long ago did scientists become aware of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere? Well, they've been studying this issue for well over 100 years. In fact, it was an Irish scientist, John Tyndall, who came from Lachlan Bridge in Carlow, who first looked at the effects of changes of the constitution of the atmosphere on the climate. A little bit later then, a Swedish scientist, Svante Arrhenius, studied the effects of CO2, carbon dioxide, and again argued that if CO2 levels increased, the climate would change. These were revolutionary ideas, because up to then, we thought of the climate as something static. Weather changed, but average conditions remained the same. But these scientists then argued that no, if you change the constitution of the atmosphere, the climate will change. Now, around about 1950 or so, Charles Keeling felt this was a really important thing to measure, and he set up an observing program in Hawaii to measure on an ongoing basis the actual background levels of carbon dioxide. And this has resulted in the most solid scientific evidence of how CO2 has been increasing over the past 50 or 60 years. So modern science can physically measure CO2 levels in the atmosphere over recent centuries. But what can scientists tell us about climate change in the deep past? Dr. Jennifer McElwain is one of the leading scientists worldwide, working in just one of the many disciplines of climate science. Jennifer, can you tell us about the science research you're doing here? Yep, I'm a paleobotanist, so I study fossil plants, particularly fossil leaves. And my main research interest is to try and understand how climate has evolved over the history of the Earth and how the atmospheric composition you know, the concentration of greenhouse gases have changed over the same time. Typically, we use fossils where there is original chemistry preserved. So here there's original organics. What we have to do is process this chemically. We put it in acid, the rock disintegrates, but the chemistry of the plant is so resistant to that acid that the leaves float up to the surface of the acid and we pick them off. And th these leaves are 200 million years old. It's an extinct 